Welcome back aboard Scua. Last week, we left you in South Sardinia, where we were resting up after a three-day offshore passage. After a day of chores, relaxing and some work, we're ready to move on. We start getting Scua ready to head out for a sail, when something weird catches our eye on deck. The sealant around two of our starboard chain plates looks odd and the chain plates look slightly higher than usual. We ran down below to check on the chain plates. Oh my god. Look at that. What just happened my dear? Well, we were getting ready to leave and then I noticed that the sealant looked weird around one of the chain plates which um, I'd resealed recently. It looked like the chain plate had pulled up and it was like uh, the rigging was kind of touching the capping rail which it shouldn't. And so I looked at it and I thought that chain plate's like way higher than it should be. So I got Elena over to have a look and then we went down below and the chain plates where they were fiberglassed, there's like a knee and it's fiberglassed to the hull. The fiberglass has just completely ripped off the hull, which, and that's done that on two chain plates. So there's only one chain plate which is solidly holding up the mast now, which is pretty scary. Um, well, it's a windy day. It's a windy day, like, the boat's not in any risk at the moment, I think, but we've obviously been sailing with that like that and not noticed. It possibly happened off of Pantelleria when we were really over canvassed and we jived. And yeah, so I don't know how close we could have been to dismasting the boat. I don't know what condition those chain plates are in now, but obviously we need to come up with some sort of solution to sort that out before we set off. And the worrying thing is that obviously the way those chain plates have been redone by the previous owner, the other chain plates have been redone as well. Except for the one... Well, the one on the starboard side which didn't fail was actually an original one, which I don't think has been redone, so... I'm not sure whether there wasn't a very good bond between the fiberglass and the hull or what. But, yeah. At the moment, I'm just my mind's kind of running through different ways of solving it and our parents arrive for our wedding in two weeks and then after that we're setting off to the Caribbean well we were <laughs> hoping, hoping to head straight across but and here it's not because it's obviously an island it's not very easy to get stuff which isn't ideal but in a way it it's really good that it happened not really good that it happened now but there could have been much much worse times for it to happen for example when we had to set off from Greece and get to here. I don't know what we would have done in that case. Or in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In the middle of the Atlantic. In a or, squall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, at the moment we've got two broken chain plates, which means we can't sail. And two other potentially weak chain plates. I mean it's not like we've been hammering the boat. We haven't been no. out in a really heavy weather with the sails up or anything dramatic. Which makes it even worse because it means they're they're not quite weak. Yeah, and very the surveyor weak. didn't obviously didn't realise they were that weak. I don't know. Like ultimately, I quite like to move to external chain plates, but that's not something I can whip up in two weeks, mm. and it's going to take a lot of drilling and stuff, which would probably mean an access to a metalwork guy. So. I'm contemplating whether we could um, leave the chain plates where we where they are. The other problem with external chain plates is that we need to change all the lengths of all the rigging, which is another two weeks worth of work mm. and a load more money. And we'd probably just re-rig the boat, and then that just means spending the winter in the med, I think, or in a yard somewhere if we're going to do all that stuff, probably. But. Um, we could potentially leave the chain plates where they are, put some sort of um, plywood or something between the chain plate and the hull, through bolt all the way through the chain plate and the plywood, and then put a metal strap on the outside, 
drill through that and then bolt through that. So basically they're still through bolted in the same way that an external chain plate would be. But with the chain plate staying where it is, which means not changing any of the rigging. But we still need stuff for that, we still need metal. Voi per caso vendete compensato per uso esterno, quindi da usare all'aria aperta? So we spent about two hours doing some research, making some calls and I feel like now we've got a fairly good solution in mind that might mean changing plans for us but at least it makes us and the boat safe. What are we going to do engineer? <laughs> so you can see the existing ones are basically the chain plates are attached to the hull by ultimately it's held by a strip of um, I assume epoxied fiberglass on either side which is about two inches wide and 18 inches long I guess on either side of the chain plate which hasn't really worked very well so we're going to through bolt it and on the outside of the hull we'll have like effectively a backing plate made of metal and then because the bolts will go through the hull and then there'll be a gap between the hull and the chain plate which for now I'm going to use Iroko, we've got some leftover Iroko from the tiller. Eventually we might replace that with something like G10 or marine ply or something or eventually we might make the chain plates external, not 100% sure on that at the moment but for now what we really need to do is repair the two broken ones and strengthen the other two which are attached in the same way. So I'll try and draw it. So, so the hull in cross section goes something like this. Actually there isn't really any tumble home, it goes straight up. And then that goes up into a bulwark and then the deck comes across like this. And then the chain plate goes up through a little hole like that. And then this is where there's actually a void there at the moment. And then currently that is all just fiberglassed in a kind of um, C shape onto the hull. What we're going to do is replace this with Iroko. I'm sorry about the camera, there's a million gusts at the moment. So then that's the chain plate there. And then we're going to through bolt in four locations. And then on the outside there'll be metal strapping to just to distribute the load of those four bolts over the hull. So I guess for now the short term plan is to fix them as best as we can and get out of the med because we're gonna have to sail to get out of the med unless we want to spend thousands on diesel and then uh, once we're out and it's cheap enough to haul out for us then assess the situation figure out how to fix the problem uh, completely so maybe uh, install external chain plates and change the whole rig and uh, adjust our plans based on all of that, really. Next step today is to move somewhere for the easterlies that we've got coming and um, wait out the easterlies while we order what we need to temporarily but strongly fix these uh, chain plates and I'm um, hoping that we can just order stuff to a post office because at the moment marina are at least 76 euros a night and that is the cheapest one we could find pretty chilled out passage so far there's quite a lot of um, 
boats and anchored ships in the bay here, but um, nothing too bad. There was a um, ferry going into Cagliari that was on a collision course with us who I had to radio, but he went behind us, which was good because he was doing 20 knots and we were doing four. And yeah, since we found out about the chain plates, we've just been kind of like a bit subdued, kind of um, thinking through all the stuff we've got to do and obviously the fact that we're going to have to spend a lot more time in the yard and just, I don't know, something just demoralising when your boat breaks especially if it's something like that stops you from using the sails or whatever but it's not too bad because there's no winds now so everyone's motoring yeah I don't know just problems to think through and stuff to sort out but in a way it's good because um, I've always got these kind of like little plans that in my head would make the boat indestructible and unstoppable and external chain plates was one of those things so bringing that forward will give me a bit more peace of mind So we just got into our anchorage, which is really nice. Um, lovely spot to do some boat work. Gonna look at the chain plates and I'm gonna have to do some work. Thank God I've got work so that we can make money to do all these repairs. We start by taking the rigging off a chain plate and tie the wires off. We dig out the sealant from above the hole, then we go back inside to remove the chain plate. holding the chain plate to the hull. That's so real. As you can see, I just ripped it with my bare hands. It's not even like properly wetted out. Like this side, it's still dry fiberglass cloth. So normally this would be made of plywood and you'd lay up plywood, stick it all together to build up a big thick knee which is bonded to the hull and then the fibreglass is shaped over it. But what our previous owner has obviously done is just kept the fibreglass shell that was on there originally, maybe got some sort of backing plate on here and then fibreglass that back to the hull with what looks like maybe three layers of this fiberglass which is obviously not not adhered up very well at all and isn't very well wetted out in most places so yeah don't know what to make of that it's august in italy so all tradespeople are on holiday for weeks this means we have to reuse the existing chain plates and backing plates for a temporary fix so we start freeing them from the fiberglass Remove the sealant from the hull and cut out our Iroko to use as wooden knee.
That's a perfect fit, but it's not thick enough, so we used some old plywood we had lying about. Time to drill holes for the bolts through both the ply and the Eroco. Then we go on deck and apply multiple layers of masking tape to the area we are going to drill to avoid spilling fiberglass into the sea. Scary stuff, we're ready to make holes in our hull. We put the bolts through the chain plate and knee. To put the external backing plate in place, we need to cut off some of the rubbing streak. Unfortunately, the strong wind is making it impossible to make a precise cut. With the dinghy bouncing up and down so much, we have to give up and postpone fixing the chain plates until a calm day. But while we wait for the wind to die down the next day, our bad luck strikes again. So we just got smashed into while we were at anchor. I can't tell you how scared I was. I'm still trembling. Catch us next week to find out what happened and what's the damage. If you enjoy our channel, subscribe and consider supporting our production on Patreon.